All right. So in this video, what I'd like to show you is how to use styles and a couple of key aspects of Microsoft Word on Windows to um, essentially make your scientific paper look even better. Um, and so here I have Word 2010. If you're working with a later version, uh, 2013 or the Office 365 account, then you should be kind of in a similar boat. You should be able to look in the ribbon and, and find something similar to what I'm pointing at, and it will probably work. I'm going to try and get an updated version uh, here soon so I can start recording some videos like that too. And, and if you're working in 2007, it's going to again be somewhere in the ribbon. So just go through the ribbon until you can find this. Um, and if you're looking for a particular section, then definitely check um, on a uh, on Microsoft's website and you might be able to find maybe some keys that, that bridge the gap between 07 and a later version. Now if you're trying to figure out what the content of your scientific paper for Collins lab courses should be, I encourage you to go to my website, um, specifically the lab section of the website, and either in the navigation bar or on the right hand side under where you see your practical countdown clock, you're going to see a link that leads you to scientific paper and that will take you to a section specifically dedicated to the scientific paper of your um, your class. Okay? And that will give you some like helpful tips, some formatting, stuff like that that I require of my class. Um, but we're, we're going to start as though we're writing it for one of your classes. Okay, So here we go. I've got several different sections. Extract, introduction, materials and methods and results. Okay, let me go ahead and clean this up a little bit. You'll have to excuse me, I'm running parallels on my Mac, so um, there is a little bit of latency and lag. And let's just say that here, um, after abstract, I want to say this is the abstract content would go. Probably write a few sentences. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this, and I'm gonna move it here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm trying to work with shortcuts here on a Windows system with Mac controls, and it doesn't work the same way. Okay, so let's go ahead and just Control C, V. There we go. V. Go. Okay, so let me just get this set up real quick. There we go. All right. So, got all these different sections. Intro, M and M, and results. All right. Now these are basically sections that we would probably deem to be like headings or uh, section headings or something like that. Well, this is going to be more along the lines of what would be your section content. So what I want to show you here is, is normally when you're going through a paper, your instructor of course has set up styles that they think you should essentially be working with. So they might say that a section heading has to be um, size 24 font and bold or something like that. So you know, it, it is worth mentioning right now that I'm going to do this tutorial based off of what my specific requirements are for my students. But what that means ultimately is that you have to pay attention to what your instructor has requested that you do. So if your instructor has told you that you essentially need to um, use Arial font instead of Times New Roman, don't sit here and do what I'm doing in this tutorial and use Times New Roman because you're probably going to get points taken off. So pay attention to your syllabus um, and your assignment for the scientific paper. That having been said, everything I'm going to show you in this video, you can do you just have to make sure it's within the parameters of what your instructor asks you to do. So let's say we are doing this for my paper. So instead of Calibri, we're going to use Times New Roman. Okay, so I'm going to change that to Times New Roman. I want it to be size 12. Actually, you know what? For the section heading, I want it to be 14. So let's change you to 14 size font. 14, there we go. Okay, and let's say I want it to be bold. All right, so my abstract is now bold. It's size 14 font. It is um, Times New Roman. 
And so I want the rest of these subsections or these section headings to be the same way. Now what I could do is I could just come to introduction and I could go through the whole song and dance of clicking here, picking Times New Roman from recently used, then going here and doing 14 and bold. And I could do that for every single one of these. But there's actually an easier way to go about doing this. So what you'll notice is I have these styles up here in the styles panel and as I hover over them it changes the style of the abstract. Okay? But the thing is I don't really like any of these styles and I don't want to necessarily rename them. They're the default styles that Word has and so what I essentially want to do is I want to um, I want to create a new style that's going to be for this specific element which I'm going to call uh, section heading. So I'm going to highlight abstract I'm going to come over here to change styles Go to style set and save as new quick styles. Actually, I'm sorry. Cancel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here to abstract with it highlighted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight abstract and I'm going to right click on it, hover on styles in this panel, and choose save section as a new quick style. That's going to bring up this window where I can type in a new name for this. So I'm going to call it section header. And when I tab off of that, it's going to give me a preview of what that's going to look like. So I'm going to click OK. So now abstract is set to section header, which you can see is right here next to normal. Now, if I want to come here to style set um, and, and look at different types of style sets I can, I'm not too concerned with that. This panel here is essentially going to allow me to look through all of my styles that I have available. Um, you'll notice I can see all of these, I can apply certain styles, all that good stuff. In any case, th this is essentially, this window lets me see all the styles I currently have available to me, uh, in addition to new ones I've just created, but I digress. Let's come over here to introduction, and you'll notice introduction is still under the style normal, even though it looks like abstract. So if I want to change introduction to section header, or I can do that by simply highlighting it and clicking it. But here's the other thing, I don't have to highlight the whole thing. So if I want to change materials and methods, I can just simply insert my cursor somewhere here, click section header, and it changes it automatically. Similar with results, I can go to the end of results, click section header, and it updates it. So the cool thing about these styles is these styles are for paragraphs, which means that essentially uh, a paragraph is any word or words before you hit enter. So abstract is its own paragraph, then I hit enter, so this sentence is a paragraph. Then I hit enter, and that means introduction is a paragraph. So I've applied this style, section header, to this paragraph, this paragraph, this paragraph, and this paragraph. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to update the style for my sentences. So I'm going to highlight this sentence here, I'm going to change this to Times New Roman. I'm going to change it to size 12 font. There we go. And I am now going to update this style by going to Styles. And I'm going to Save Selection as a new quick style. And I'm going to call this Section Content. And there's what Section Content looks like. I'll hit OK. And now I can just go to each of these sentences, choose Section Content. And there we go. So now all of my paragraphs are formatted with one style or another. And you may be asking yourself, well, why would we want to do this? Why does it matter? Well, let's say that for some strange reason, your instructor tells you that instead of having these headings as being black, they want you to change the text color to blue. Okay. So I've changed abstract to this blue color. Okay. But notice none of my other styles have changed yet. Now, what I could do then is I could go through and highlight each and every one of these headers and I could change the color to blue, but I don't want to do that. I want to make this quick, I want to make it painless, I want to make it very, very easy, okay? So here with abstract, what I'm going to do is highlight this again, I'm going to right click, I'm going to go to styles, and I'm going to choose to update section header to match selection. Okay, and when I do that, notice that all of my other section headers change to match. So this is a super fast and convenient way to update 
um, a multitude of different elements on multiple pages. I changed them back there by just control z back two steps so that they were the way that I needed them to be. But let's go ahead and take it to our paragraph. So here's one of my paragraphs. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. Control C, I'm going to paste it a couple of times. And you'll notice right now my paragraph is uh, single spaced. And let's say that I wanted my paragraphs instead to be double spaced because as an instructor I tell my students it's easier for me to annotate changes you should make with double spacing. So I'm going to go ahead with this highlighted and I'm going to choose uh, to double space. And with it still highlighted, I'm going to again right click and I'm going to choose styles and I'm going to update section content to match selection. And what you're going to see now is if I come here to the introduction and I choose to um, control C this and add in another sentence, now this style is automatically doing um, double spacing. So by using styles throughout my paper, any changes I make are immediately reflected anywhere those styles occur. And that's the key. You have to make sure that you actually have that style applied to that particular paragraph of interest. Because if I had another paragraph down here that looks the same, sorry, again I'm trying to use max shortcuts here and it's messing with my windows. If I have another paragraph down here, let's say this is another paragraph and the style for this was normal, and I go back to where this paragraph is, um, let's say that this is font size 12, and it's Times New Roman. So this looks like my results section here, but if I suddenly decide that I want to update all of my um, section content, so let's say I just highlight this and I want to change all that to blue, and I go to Styles, Update Section Content to Match Selection, well, all of my paragraphs here with the section content have changed. This guy has not because it is not section content. And so what I would need to do here is I need to highlight this whole paragraph and I would need to change it to section content. And now, if I want to change this back, and notice I can just highlight a single word and I can change it. So let's say I want to change this back actually to, I'll just go to automatic and I will update. So right click again, styles and update section content to match selection. And now everything is changing back to that color and this paragraph is included because it's now section content. So that's the benefit of using styles in your paper. Let's talk now about something a little different but another useful tip. So let's say that your instructor tells you that you have to make, um, essentially you have to make a particular um, format in your paper where each section is on a new page. So that means the abstract section is on its own page, and then when you get to your introduction, the introduction is, is on its own page. And I don't know about you, but when I was in college, I didn't know a whole lot about the functionality of Word other than, hey, it's a word processing you know, thing, and I can make the font look a certain way, whatever. But this is essentially how I used to handle doing a new page. the good old return key, right? Takes you to a new page, woohoo, and it looks nice here. But there's a problem with this. Let's say that I decide to lengthen my abstract. So I want to add in a few sentences. So I'm going to control C, I'm going to copy that and paste in a few new sentences. Okay, so my abstract gets a little longer. Let's see what happened to our introduction. Uh-oh, our introduction got pushed down. And what you'll find yourself commonly doing then is deleting and bringing your introduction back up. And then if suddenly you realize, oh, I don't need this many sentences, I want to delete this one or these few, well, then that's even more of a pain because your introduction is now shifting back onto the page with your abstract. This is a huge pain. But the good news is there's a cleaner, easier way of doing this. So I'm going to delete and bring my introduction back here to where is literally the next line from the end of my abstract. Now instead of hitting enter or return all of those times, what you're going to do is come to your insert tab in the ribbon and you're going to choose to insert a page break. And essentially what a page break says is anything after the cursor is going to be on a brand new page. So now let's go ahead and see what happens if I add in new sentences here. So I added new sentences and I scroll down and notice 
nothing happens to the position of my introduction. And the cool thing is if I just elongate my abstract to where it goes uh, to a new page, my introduction goes to a brand new page. So let me go ahead and control Z back a couple of things here. I can go ahead and delete uh, a lot of these sentences and my introduction stays on its own distinct page. So I can do this by putting another page break here to put materials and methods on a new page. I can do the same thing with results. And this way, every single one of my sections winds up on a brand new page, and I'm free to just edit each of those sections individually without worrying about affecting the placement of another section um, on its own distinct page. So here, if I want to lengthen my introduction, let me add a few sentences here. I'm going to highlight this paragraph. There we go. And let's say I want to start a new paragraph there. There's another paragraph there. I know I'm not using tabs. Might be driving some people crazy, but that's okay. Okay. Materials and methods never winds up on the same page as my introduction. So I don't know if your instructor is going to require this of you, but if you ever need to build a paper in this manner, page breaks are a great way to always separate your content. So those are the two things I really encourage you to use. Styles to make it super easy to edit the format of particular elements throughout the entire paper, only having to make one change and updating the style, or page breaks to ensure that you've got clean transitions to new pages between different sets of content. Again, I don't know if you're gonna re be required to use this, but it's a beneficial thing to know um, because it just makes it so much easier to keep content on a specific page. So that's all I have to say. Uh, good luck on your tutorial, or on your tutorials, on your scientific paper, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful.